Welcome to our hymn entitled Where Parents Try to Call the Police. When I ask them to leave, sorry if the format looks weird, I'm on the mobile version. I16F never dealt with entitled parents, so this is all new for me. For some background, my dad bought a small house to bed one bath. Near a beach from my grand aunt and the house has always been in our family. It's on a small patch of land with some yard to the sides of it with an old metal shed. With some glass windows towards the back. Everyone in our family uses it and we rent it out when no one's there. Dot, we went down this weekend. Because it was going to be fun and we needed to get ready for renters. It's close to a community park, pool so it's always a little loud and sometimes busy. Behind us is another small house with barley any yard. My parents went out to get some hardware when I stayed home to work on some school work. They can take a long while because traffic is absolutely terrible most of the time. Kids tend to play on our lawn but don't get really loud so we don't mind. I heard a loud bang on something metal but I didn't see anything from the window. So I went back to work. Again I heard it around 5 to 7 minutes later. I went outside this time because I didn't know what it was. Apparently there were two boys, 10 to 12 years old, playing kickball in our yard. They seemed surprised when I stepped outside the house. I asked them what they were playing, and they said kickball. I asked if they could try avoid hitting the shed and the house. They agreed and went back to the house behind ours when I left. 15 minutes go by, I hear it again, but I assumed it was a mistake. Because kids can't really control their kick sometimes. I hear it again four times in the next 10 minutes. I went back outside and found the kids on my family's land again. But with the parents, the boys didn't change and were still kicking at the house shed. When they saw me, they stopped playing. I asked the parents and the kids this time to help the kids avoid hitting the house. They seemed to be annoyed by me and told me they are watching them. And that I should mind my own business in a pretty snarky way. I was pretty surprised because an adult never talked to me like that. I said said I wouldn't mind if they would just stop hitting the house and shed. They said I was being an ungrateful kid on vacation. I responded saying that the yard they were on was owned by my family. And so is the house they are hitting, so I don't want it to get damaged. They couldn't care less and pretty much said well, they're kids and they don't know better. I suggested they could play in the park, 5 to 10 minute walk away, so they wouldn't hit anything. And would have more room to play. They seemed offended and said they weren't paying for that stuff, and I was putting their kids in danger i said i it was open to the public free of charge and it was right next to a police station they seemed to ignore that and said if i don't get away from them and their children they would call the police for harassment and putting kids at risk i'm annoyed at this point and i reminded them that they're on my dad's property and that they could have damaged the property they seemed angry that I said that and went quiet for a bit. The kids seemed somewhat embarrassed and the oldest seemed mortified and asked if they could just go to the park. The mom said, you're right kid name, we shouldn't waste any more time. On this ungrateful brat, they left promptly with the husband and the younger kid in tow. I was shocked and stood there for a bit and soon went back inside definitely a new experience and one I don't want again but will probably encounter again in life. My student's dad is basically an inanimate object. I have been listening to a lot of posts from this subreddit and I suddenly remembered one that felt worth telling. I am 29, work at a school for kids with learning disabilities, mental, emotional issues and various other issues that prevent them from succeeding in traditional education. The family that this story focused on had one child, who we will call Jimmy 16M. Enrolled at our school. About four years ago, I had Jimmy in class for middle school science, and he had a variety of issues. 
some of which were documented like dysgraphia and ADHD. Now as someone who has ADHD and specializes with working with kids to overcome these obstacles. Our classes are one-on-one -on -one so we have a deeper connection. I began to pick up on when Jimmy was actually struggling and when he was just relying on his diagnosis to get himself off the hook. Any time that Jimmy had an issue at school his favorite solution was to call his mother who would phone the school to yell at our administrators for how we had upset her son. This was an obvious red flag for me. But I trusted my school administrators to protect me from this insane mom. This particular story happened during a lunch period on a Tuesday, the day that I run Dungeons and Dragons Club. Jimmy was always an avid member of D&D &D Club, despite never fully understanding the spirit of the club. He has what is sometimes known as main character syndrome. He just wants to be the best with no effort, do nothing to earn strength but show off. Anyway, this kid wants the cheat codes for life. Jimmy is always frustrating to play with, wanting to be stronger than everyone else and needing the story to focus on him, to even remotely keep his attention. But on this day I hit my limit. Jimmy's father was on campus this day for some reason. Our school atmosphere is far different than a normal high school. So I just sort of accepted his presence when Jimmy brought him to D&D &D Club. I felt a bit awkward doing voices in front of my students' parents, but I kicked off the D&D &D session. Speaking as various Egyptian gods, I'm a huge nerd and I like basing things on mythology. What really finally broke my endlessly patient nature was a minor spill. At this point in time I allowed students to eat while we played as our club took place during their lunch period. But this policy was quickly amended after this event. Jimmy's father sat in the corner of my office, classroom for me it's the same thing. All my classes are one on one as my group of adventurers gathered for the next exciting session of their adventure. I won't go into all of the maddening antics Jimmy got into in this club. But during this particular session, before anything truly epic could take place Jimmy spilled juice all over the table we were playing. On, I paused to let Jimmy grab some paper towels to clean up the mess. But instead he seemed confused that the game had been paused. I asked him are you going to clean up this mess first, to which he responded you clean it up. I shit you not. His dad was in the fucking room and said nothing. I realized I had to be dad all of a sudden and said Jimmy. You are going to go get some paper towels and clean this up or D&D's done for good. He immediately got up and started cleaning. And also apologized to me. As much as this child drove me crazy. It was a reminder to me that the nightmare kids come from nightmare parents. Jimmy was the most entitled kid I think I ever encountered. And he left our school due to his mother's issues. But I could only feel bad for him, knowing he would continue to be raised by a mom who would excuse his every flaw and do everything for him. And a father who was basically an unused shovel leaning against the wall. There is something so crazy to me about watching your kid rudely telling their teacher to clean up. After them and not reacting, I had to rant, poor kid. I say jump you say how high. You say I need help I say why oh. Why? Oh so my mom loved saying the phrase if I say jump, you say how high. Every time I failed to do something or miss something. She had laid out for me sometimes she'd leave a list somewhere and I wouldn't see it until last second. She often would remind me if she or my brother was at the hospital, airport, etc I better be there. God I hate that phrase, I will literally find the person who coined it and shit on their grave. Please help me achieve this bucket list item. Anyways flash forward to COVID-19. My ship is doing 48 hours mass evacuation. I had to go home and at the time I lived at my mom's place. Rather the address since I live, work full time at sea. I was panicking because I had no way home, so I informed my family. I need to come home now, I offered to pay for rent utilities do reappears etc. 
At the time I had disposable income and didn't mind doing that. I felt the if I say jump mentality is instilled in me perhaps they'd understand. My mom and brothers told me go fuck yourself. Find a hotel you got money, you are an adult, you aren't our responsibility. I begged them that I had nowhere to go and that isn't even possible. They said that I'm responsible for myself and I am not to come home. My exo saw me in tears almost, mumbling my family abandoned me. I'm gonna be on the street. He asked if I had somewhere to go, I told him I didn't. I ended up getting placed on essential employees. List and the expectation is that I in return, will come to work when needed. Absolutely I agreed and so survived that crazy year. Spending day after day stuck in a hotel and occasionally being taken in full work on my ship. Even though my mental health took a hit. I'm still incredibly thankful to the captain and so for keeping me off the street. Got a nice hotel and yet when I told her. I was safe after motherly concern. She said I'm glad you got a place to stay. This same person demanded I pay $3,000 a year to cover car insurance. Or be on the street.edit. This year I went NC on her, and I am happy I did.